Google just gave Israel super dystopian artificial intelligence technology to identify and keep track of Palestinians. Kinda like how IBM gave the Germans punch cards to identify and keep track of Jews in World War II. And this AI technology may be coming to a town near you. This is gonna be a controversial one. So you're Israel. The Palestinians think this land is rightfully theirs and so do you. So you and the Palestinians have been fighting over this piece of land for the past 75 years. I personally have no stance on this issue either way. Feel free to fight each other in the comment section below. Because of all this conflict, you've put the Palestinians under mass surveillance and security. We have uh, 22 checkpoints, well, more than 100 movement barriers. We have 1,800 uh, shops closed by the Israeli closure policy. We have around 1,000 Palestinian apartments became empty. So the area where I usually uh, do my activities and where Palestinians are suffering is very, very restricted. And maybe you will see a soldier every two to three meters. In border cities like Hebron, cameras are everywhere. Some people have stopped letting their kids play in the yard in fear of Israel's all-seeing eye. One former soldier said the cameras can even see into private homes. Every few meters, you see uh, one camera or two cameras or three cameras. So the people don't feel you know, any kind of privacy even inside their, their homes in Hebron. But then you run into a problem. You have a ton of cameras to monitor. You would need soldiers around the clock watching terabytes of footage to look out for suspicious activity, to keep track of who's who, to see what people are up to. And that is simply not practical. So who do you turn to? Google, who's got the best AI tech out there and is always drooling at the mouth for profitable government contracts. So when you went to Google, Google happily accepted. They went all out for the Israelis. Now, instead of people having to manually monitor these cameras, Google's AI will be able to automatically track names, faces, and locations of Palestinians. Now, that is cool, but it's not all that special. What is special is that on top of that, Google's AI will apparently be able to determine people's emotional states. This is according to training documents made for the Israeli government, which includes a section called sentiment analysis. That means if the AI detects someone looking, say, extra angry or vengeful today, why not stop him at the next security checkpoint in the name of safety? in the name of preventing crime from happening pre-crime. After all, expressing emotions is dangerous. This will turn the areas near the Palestinian border into highly patrolled smart war zones. Nothing could go wrong here, right? Governments are definitely not going to see Israel using this tech and want to eventually use it themselves, right? Stay dangerous and let's get into it. Israel is a super polarizing topic, which leads to some insane bias in the media coverage about it. Take this story about Israel for example. Nearly 70% of the sources for this story were left-leaning. But when you look at this story about how Putin might have cancer, most of the sources lean right. And when you take it a step further and look at who owns the media companies that report on the story, none of them are independently owned. They're all owned by super rich people or giant media conglomerates. And the only reason I'm able to know all of this is because of ground news. Ground News is super cool. It's a website and app that shows you the latest breaking news stories, how biased the coverage is, left-leaning, right-leaning, or in the middle, how accurate and factual the sources are, a breakdown of who owns the media companies covering the story, and you can even swipe between headlines to see how the exact same story is framed differently by left, center, and right sources. Like this story about Kanye being back on Instagram. The right-leaning headline makes it sound positive. Kanye is seemingly defiant, offering no apologies, while the left ones aren't so positive saying he returns amid continued fallout. And that's what I love about Ground News. It allows you to break free from media bias so that you can think for yourself and learn the truth about what's going on. So if you're looking for a better way to read the news, go to ground.news slash to try it for free or subscribe to get access to all the features you see here. So pause the video and go to ground.news slash with the link below to get started now. Thanks to Ground News for sponsoring this video. In 2019, the Israeli Defense Forces launched a program called Operation Blue Wolf, and it went a little something like this. Have soldiers go out and take pictures of Palestinians. Put these pictures in your own private version of Facebook, where family history, education level, and security rating is recorded. 
Then at checkpoints, scan faces and depending on the security rating that comes up, question, detain, or arrest. Oh, and don't forget to take as many photos as possible so you can win extra vacation days for your unit. כל סוף שבוע, היחידה שנמצאת במקומות הראשונים, היחידות שנמצאות במקומות הראשונים, קיבלו פרסים, לדוגמה, ארוחת ערב יותר מיוחדת, או לצאת הביתה יותר מוקדם. As you can see, having soldiers manually spy on people is pretty inefficient. So they needed some help. They have all these security cameras already, but if they wanted their AI to be able to take this footage and categorize specific objects like suspicious looking Palestinians or someone doing something violent in the street, it would take years and a lot of money to manually train their AI to do that. Because before an AI bot can decide they are seeing signs of violence, a human needs to feed it millions of images and videos of people doing violent things in all kinds of different situations, even in cartoons, so it can confidently know what a violent act actually looks like. But Israel just doesn't have the time to wait for a whole staff of human technicians to feed the AI footage and then manually tag photos for them. They need the automatic surveillance now. So where will the Israeli government get all this footage to train their AI software from? Google. Google's cloud is really a match made in heaven when you think about it. And once their AI software is hooked up to Google's platform, Israel will be able to go from 0 to 1984 in a matter of months. Enter Project Nimbus. In April 2021, the Israeli Finance Ministry announced that Google signed a contract to build a $1.2 billion cloud computing system called Project Nimbus, giving the Israeli government full access to Google's machine learning and AI tools. And that this shouldn't be too big of a deal. I mean, in 2020, America's Border Patrol used Google's AI cloud platform to analyze footage from their surveillance towers. Why can't the Israelis? But there's something different about Project Nimbus. If you take a look at the AI training documents Google gave to the Israeli government, you will see that they show instructions on how to use their cloud of data for emotional detection, where the AI would look at facial movement, speech, and even text to determine the emotional state of a subject. As you can see, it can detect joy, sorrow, anger, surprise, exposed, whatever that means, or if the image is blurred, or if the subject is wearing headwear, which is probably referring to something like this. Google's AI also gives its choice a confidence score. In this case, 53%. You will also notice that the training documents contain a custom logo that combines Google with the Israeli flag, suggesting that Israel is being given their own separate cloud platform for perhaps more military-driven goals. But of course, Google refused to comment when asked about this by The Intercept. But here's the problem. AI emotion detection can get a little dicey. Even Microsoft, who has their own little AI cloud platform, said that it would no longer offer emotion detection features because it just isn't accurate enough. Critics say that it's unscientific to assume that the expression you make reflects what you're really feeling inside, because everyone can fake a smile. There have also been studies done on the accuracy of emotional detection through AI. One study said that emotional detection tends to assign more negative emotions to certain ethnicities. National Institute of Standards and Technology found that the facial recognition technology suffers from a significant bias uh, that leads to misidentifications of minorities. Uh, it violates our rights to be free from surveillance, to privacy, and of course uh, to uh, preserve some anonymity. Uh, without privacy, uh, we cannot really be free, right? But Google just doesn't seem worried about it. As long as the money is good, they're completely okay with deploying this tech into a conflict zone. This is Hebron, a city that is now a ghost town. It's located right on the border of Israel and Palestine. And because both Palestinians and Israelis live there, soldiers are constantly policing the area. We have uh, 22 checkpoints, well, more than 100 movement barriers. We have 1,800 uh, shops closed by the Israeli closure policy. Here, there is no concept of personal privacy, and the people who live there are constantly being monitored. Whether it's through checkpoints, 
עוצרים את המכוניות, יוצרים פקק עצום, ואז כזה בקצב שלך את בודקת כל מכונית. קוראים לבן אדם להביא תעודת זהות, הופכים את האוטו. Getting your house searched, getting yourself searched, getting detained, no matter what your age. אני בתור חייל פשוט לא קיבלתי אף פעם איזושהי פקודה את מי אפשר לעצור מבחינת גיל ואת מי לא. Oh, and don't forget to smile. The level of surveillance and control in the city of Hebron has been slowly ramping up over the years. But civilians are now noticing a whole new level to the Israeli military's presence. There are cameras everywhere. Mounted on houses, on street corners, some people have stopped letting their kids play in the yard in fear of the army's all-seeing eye. One former soldier said that the cameras can even see into private homes. Some Palestinians are convinced it's a way to drive them out of the West Bank so that Israel can finally get the land they've been wanting for centuries. Our mission is to make all the Palestinians feel that they can't be able to get their head. That's exactly what my officer said to me in the army. Others see it as a weird dystopian experiment, a testing ground for a surveillance technology that can later be sold to other countries. It's a kind of using the Palestinians as a simulation object. It's a kind of, you know, uh, you know, we are an experiment. So they are trying to test this new technology on the Palestinians, especially in Hebron. Then they sell it to Kashmir, they sell it to India, they sell it, I don't know where. trying to get big, fat, dystopian government contracts for years. There was Project Maven in 2017 where they tried to sell their drone footage to the US military, Project Dragonfly in 2018, where they tried to build a censored search engine for China. But every time they get close to making a deal, some annoying, ungrateful Google employee tries to expose all their hard work. So how did Google finally get away with it this time in the case of Israel? Google's ethical AI charter states that they will not, quote, deploy AI that causes or is likely to cause overall harm, including weapons, surveillance, or any application whose purpose contravenes widely accepted principles of international law and human rights, end quote. All right, sounds good. Sounds noble. But wait, read the fine print in Google's contract with Israel and you'll see that Israel put in a clause that conveniently blocks Google from being able to drop the project. even if there's protests. I guess Google made sure that their employees won't be able to dismantle yet another lucrative government contract. And here's another convenient detail. In 2018, Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google, put out a blog post saying that Google would not develop artificial intelligence for quote, weapons or other technologies whose principal purpose or implementation is to cause or directly facilitate injury to people, end quote. So instead, Google invests in startups that do the dirty work for them. Companies like Orbital and Planet, which work directly with the US Defense Department on projects that could be said to, quote, directly facilitate injury, end quote. So Google is involved in plenty of sketchy government contracts. You just don't know about it because it's not directly tied to their name. But it's not all Google. Israel is an equal player in this scheme. Any vision. An Israeli tech company which created the facial recognition software the army uses at Hebron City checkpoints claimed that their technology was only being used to authenticate the workers as they passed through. But a leaked demo video obtained by NBC News showed that people were actually being recognized and tracked as they walked the streets, not just at the checkpoints. The Israeli Association of Civil Rights also recently found out that the police have been using license plate recognition technology to track the movement of cars in Israel. They started using this technology a few years ago without any official clearance by the law, and now the government is in the process of creating new legislation to allow the police to legally use this tracking software as well as facial recognition on regular Israeli citizens. All in the name of safety, right? And as Israel perfects this mass surveillance technology on the Palestinian populace, what's stopping them from eventually selling this technology to other interested governments? Just look at Israel's Pegasus spyware. This spyware allows you to hack into almost any phone, read your target's text messages, track calls, track their location, collect passwords, turn on their microphone and camera, all without your victim ever having to click on anything. 
and Israel's cyber arms company NSO Group has sold the spyware to powerful people all over the world to allow them to spy on activists, journalists, and political leaders and the like. It was even used by the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia to hack into Jeff Bezos' phone. So don't be surprised if in the future, governments start buying Israel's new emotion detection as a service package. And it's all thanks to Google. Maybe it's convenient that Google removed their company-wide motto, don't be evil, from their code of conduct documents in 2018, a phrase that has been a part of the company's code of conduct since the very start. Israel and Palestine are fighting over land, a conflict as old as humanity itself. In the medieval times, landowners were considered lords because they had all the power, all the soldiers, all the wealth. But lucky for you, today you too can be a lord thanks to established titles. If you're not familiar with established titles, it allows you to buy approximately one square foot of land in Scotland for just under $50. And the thing about owning land in Scotland is that there's an old Scottish tradition where landowners are called lords and ladies. That means for just under $50, you can put that you're a lord on your credit cards, on your plane tickets, dating profiles, and more to show that you are above the peasantry. To be clear, this is not an official lordship, but it's still pretty cool. You're gonna get a certificate, it will feature a unique plot number for your plot of land in Scotland. These make a super unique last minute gift that would definitely set you apart from everyone else's mediocre gifts. There's an exclusive sale going on for viewers of this channel where you'll get 10% off any purchase when you go to establishedtitles.com slash jaketran and use code jaketran. So pause the video and become a lord today by going to establishedtitles.com slash jaketran and using code jaketran with the link below. Thanks to Established Titles for sponsoring this video.